All right. Am I good still? Hear me? Yep. All right. I got you. All right. Here we go. All right, guys. We got Dane DeWitt with us today, um, manager of BMO Harris Bank. Uh, we're just grateful that, Dane, uh, you're able to hop on with us tonight and teach us um, a little bit more about being leaders. I appreciate you having me. No problem, man. So just kind of give the audience a, a quick little background of, of you and, and then what you do now. Uh, okay. Uh, I actually, uh, for all the guests out there, I actually grew up with Chris. We went yep. to the same, same school. We, uh, we, we probably, I mean, probably were in the same class since like kindergarten. Oh yeah. I think uh, so. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, grew up in a small town and, Ended up uh, getting my degree in education from uh, Anderson University and then figuring that that wasn't really uh, what uh, <laughs> wasn't really what uh, God had planned for me. So ended up uh, actually sold some life insurance for a while and nice. ended up cold calling a, a, a bank manager <laughs> at BMO Harris and turned out I ended up getting a job at BMO and uh, the rest is history. I've uh, been pretty much all over Indy. Uh, last spot I was at, I was, um, uh, you know, finished probably top 10% in the company, uh, being a personal banker down at the plaza at the BMO Tower, downtown Indy. Um, and just with the exposure down there, ended up getting promoted to bank manager at Castleton. And then within three months, got promoted over to 62nd in Allisonville. So, man, uh, and here I am. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of success. And it just, that's a cool story. Just kind of, you're trying something else, stepping out there and connected with this guy at the bank and ended up where yeah. you are now. That's kind of cool. Just seeing how that all plays together sometimes when we look back on it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, now, how is how is being a bank manager? I, like you said, your degree was education, so like that's the big shift from what you were learning, right? Or it was, but luckily, uh, uh, I've been in the army the past nine years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a non commissioned officer for probably five of those nine mm -hmm. years, so I've had a lot of experience leading individuals oh, yeah. and uh, uh, managing a group of, of people towards a, you know, a common goal. Uh, you know, having the experience in the army, it's a uh, little bit more pressure on that side. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, transitioning that to the civilian world, it's, it, it comes a little bit easier, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think, I think that is honestly just, kind of comes natural yeah uh you know people in leadership roles were are there for a reason yeah uh, um, and i i don't know but that that's obviously just something that i've had in my dna i mean for sure. ever you know growing up playing sports oh yeah a team captain or, or whatever the case may be so um you know that just kind of that kind of transitioned into into the career now, um, whether it be teaching army or right or in the banking world. Yeah, and it's kind of, we're kind of talking about is like what a leader is versus kind of like what uh, an owner mindset. Now, obviously, there are owners of things, and that doesn't yep. mean they're all a negative concept, but just kind of the mindset of oh, I own this or oh, I, I'm leading these people. Like, so what do you see different between a leader and then someone who might have like the owner or the selfish mindset? Well, I, I think we could go a couple of different ways on that. Uh, you know, being in business, mm -hmm. um, you know, once you get to know business owners, you get to, it, it's a whole different, uh, <laughs> it's a whole different breed out there, man. I'm sure. Uh, which, you know, some of the, you know, some of the messages that I've sent you in the past, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I personally, I think that's the key. Yeah. Uh, like I, I don't want to, in business, I don't want to be an employee. Mm. I want to, I want to be a, a business owner. So. Sure. 
I'm making the rules. I'm um, creating financial freedom that I'm not owned by a job. Yep. That I'm creating wealth and able to basically do my job wherever I want to do it at. Absolutely. So, um, so there's a couple of different, you know, different avenues you can look at that from, but you know, a lot of good leaders eventually cross that border over into being a business owner. Yeah. So. But as far as like, you, usually like when I think of a leader, I think of some, a positive person who can motivate others and, and bring up a positive change and whatever they're uh, incorporated with. And I guess my thought with the whole like owner quote unquote, just the yeah. mindset, but mindset of it is more of like an internally focused. Like they're just more caring about themselves yeah. than a good leader would be. So I didn't know if, if you've experienced that. Um, anyone maybe when you were maybe not as high uh, in the chain or yeah. uh, as a rank, was there someone over you or someone you've had to deal with who's had that selfish like, I'm the owner, I'm I'm big and bad instead of like leading you in a positive way but still like making things happen yeah i mean well you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there with uh being being selfish and self mm. uh self-centered kind of because i managed a uh a franchise gnc for a while in between um, graduating college and getting into the banking industry and so I worked for a, a a guy that owned the owned the shop. Yeah. So basically, like, I mean, everything that we did was for his bottom line. Mm. So, and you know that goes back to the employee owner owner perspective. But like, you know, you're working you're working seven days a week. I'm working ten hour days. And I'm getting paid like nine bucks an hour. And, and he's okay with that, obviously, because, mm. you know, he's got to make his, he's got to make his money off the store too. So, yep. um, and, but, you know, with that comes all the negatives, like, you know, how much turnover we had there. Mm. It's like, you can't keep employees when, when all you care about is, is, is the the dollar yep. at the end of the day? So uh, there's a huge difference between um, between leaders that actually care for a staff and um, like being a manager. The way yeah. I do now, my success depends on how well I take care of my staff. Absolutely. If you don't have the people, then you're pretty much screwed because yeah. nobody's going to want to work there. <laughs> exactly. So. And the same with this, like if I don't put out a good quality content for the listeners, not just hear myself talk, but for a good product for the listeners, then nothing's ever going to come from it. So right. yeah, absolutely. You got to change the mindset on that from, from internal to, to external. What can we do for them? And that's yeah. huge. I think, um, I guess is that kind of so what would you say maybe are your top traits in a good leader if you're looking at other leaders that maybe you've learned from or that you see uh, leading in a different setting or whatever it might be what are a couple of things that kind of always stick out to you in those leaders that you either want to mimic or want to work on in yourself the positive traits that you see well, first of all, I would say like leading by example, because mm. uh, especially in the banking industry, what I found is that once you start getting into higher level leadership positions, I think sometimes what people do is they take it, take that position and take it for granted. Mm. So they take advantage of the position. And they think once you get to that spot, then you can kind of like sit back and, and yeah. relax and Coast, let everybody yeah. do the work. Um, and that is not like that's That's not how no. it works, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I, I've been fortunate enough to work for some, uh, some of the best managers in the company that, uh, uh, like went above and beyond and went the extra mile to make sure that, um, you know, they were the first one there at the office. They were the last one to leave. Nobody worked harder than them. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of what I emulated at, at the bank at every location that I've been at. So that's awesome. Um, that's, that's one of the things that I would say is key to, you know, key to, to the success there. Yeah. So walking the walk and taking care of those who you work with for sure. Yeah. And I, I think it kind of goes back to like, what I've heard multiple times is everyone has influence and, uh, this year when I went to the global leadership summit, Patrick Lencioni said, everyone has leadership or everyone has influence, but not everyone should. <laughs> because like you said, there's been yep. people that have led poorly and just cared about the bottom line that benefited them. And so what would you say with your experience from the military, from, from managing BMO um, for those of us maybe who aren't in as high of positions, um, do you consider people who are not in as high a position in things still capable of being leaders? And if so, what are a couple of things that um, we might be able to practice to become better leaders? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, because look at the people in the leadership positions. They didn't, they didn't just start there. Right. They, they had, they had to come from somewhere. Yep. So, um, being willing to take on extra um extra work per se or mm. um extra responsibilities um like what i found like what i found is you know prior to getting promoted a couple of times is mm -hmm. that when leaders start recognizing that there's um uh, that there's opportunity in individuals, they'll start pouring stuff on you. Mm. And then the reason they're doing that is just to see how you handle it. Gotcha. And they don't really expect you to, to complete all the tasks, but if you're willing to take it and take it head on, then I would say that is, that's key. I mean, like one of the managers I had, he, he told me one time that, He's like, I'm always giving tests to people just to see what they do. Huh. He's like, so he gave me a test one time. I, he was going to be out of the office for two weeks. It was a transition in between him mm -hmm. taking over the branch, my old manager leaving. And he was like, I want you to come up with a, a, uh, a plan for the branch for the next two weeks while I'm out. I want all the goals written down. I want exactly what you're going to do for each staff member. And I want you to do that and send it to me, uh, before this, you know, this transition starts. And he did not think I was going to do that at all, <laughs> just because of how busy I was. Right. And I, I did that. I made that a priority. I completed the plan. I sent it to him the next, you know, the next Monday, it was sent to the market president and then to the regional president in the Midwest of the bank. Awesome. And, and within two months I was promoted. That's to awesome. Bank manager. So just don't, don't get so, don't get so overwhelmed at things. That's what I would advise people. Like, I got you. Know, you. Yeah. If people are putting stuff on you, it's probably for a good reason. Absolutely. No, that's a great point. Some people might be like, Oh, I wish they'd stop, you know, stop picking on me, but it's the yeah. other, it's the opposite way. And it's a good thing. If you, if you take it, like you said, head on. Yeah. Um, so I guess the next question kind of would be, so if someone was working on these things and they, and they felt like they might have become a leader, mm -hmm. do you think it's certain people that, have that turn into like that selfish ownership mindset or do you think everyone has that possibility of of becoming more self-centered um 
well obviously you're you're always going to get some you know you're going to get individuals that kind of get a big head yeah. um and they start to get a little uh notoriety for for doing things well um but it just depends i mean yeah. honestly do you, how do you how do you think people who maybe are, are getting more notoriety or are getting more press or whatever it may be how do you think how can we keep ourselves grounded so we stay kind of humble and and stay like nose to the grindstone of being a good leader instead of becoming that all about me owner type mentality. Yeah. I mean, I think everything varies, but right. you know, I, I think for me, it kind of just comes natural just kind of right. from the place that we grew up. Yep. Like I just, you know, we grew up in a farm town yeah. I, I mean, I grew up in the middle of a cornfield and yeah. I remember going out and, and taking care of the hogs in <laughs> second grade before school. So yeah. It's just that kind of mentality for me that just it's just easy. My parents taught me that way. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. But, uh, I was gonna shout out to our parents because that definitely has like looking <laughs> at kids now, uh, especially with my wife being a teacher. Like, parenting's a big deal, and so thankfully yeah. we had really good parents and uh, that were able to teach us a lot. And so yeah, shout out to Mrs. Yeah. Hal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Mrs. Think, DeWitt, uh, not Hal. Why did I say Mrs. Hal? You and Patrick, my bad. Yeah, Mrs. DeWitt, shout out to Mrs. <laughs> DeWitt. Jeez. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess also, too, I, I, I always go back to all your staff and your other yeah. people. Like, I mean, you know how what it's like to work for a bad manager or, a, a, you know, a bad boss. Like, do you, you don't want to be that you don't want to be that person right so you want to be the one that is able to make change in an organization so that's that's the way i look at it absolutely yeah and i think there's so much like that goes into being a good leader it's hard to kind of encapsulate it all with just a couple of traits um i mean i think one big one that you've kind of hit around is like the transparency like with your employees like mm -hmm. involving them and bringing them in have you had a, an experience maybe with um someone maybe not at the bank but in general that might have been standoffish but you were able to be transparent or, or did something to kind of win them over and then ended up having a good working relationship with them yeah i mean it happens a lot in yeah the bank okay. because uh people get so turned off by previous managers and previous staff that they work with that they get into kind of a, they pigeonhole every manager that comes in being the same exact way. Hmm. So um, it's tough to break that. I'm it's sure. tough to break that mold, but you know, the only thing that you can do is, you know, to can continue to, to wear on them and, um, keep doing what the right thing is and, Absolutely. and and showing them that, you know, that you're there for your staff and that you're there to, to make a difference and, and make sure everybody's successful. So really, I think like the difference with me is every time that I go into a new branch, it's every initial meeting that I have with every staff member, um, it's not about what was going wrong that we need to change. It's about how are you doing and mm. what can I do? What can I do to help you get to where you want to go? Awesome. In, in your career, whether that be in banking or if you're not, if you don't like the job and you want to go somewhere else, I, I mean, I'll do whatever I can to help you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's a, a huge trait of leaders. I think is, is kind of stepping aside, helping those that are below us in yeah. position. Um, because one, if we help them and we make them want to work for us, they're going to help us, obviously. I mean, that's help them and it helps us. But then if they don't want to stay, still being able to be humble and, and helping them and understanding like 
that's fine. They have a different path, a different journey to go on and be able to, to kind of help direct them. And I think that's a, a great mindset and a great focus to have is on them. Cause that's what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I'm so, you know, focused on other people is hmm. because like, you know, being in the army, like you can't, <laughs> you can't be a dude that's self-centered and only cares about himself because yeah. when you go, when you get deployed and you go in outside the wire and you're going on a mission, like, do you want to have dudes around you that like look at you like their, their brother <laughs> and yeah. that trust you with every ounce of their every ounce of their being or do you want to be somebody that is everybody hates you because you are a terrible leader and all you care about is yourself yeah so it's uh it puts it in a whole different perspective when you when you um add the military uh i'm sure yeah that makes a lot more uh kind of a serious you better be a good leader <laughs> something yeah. bad could happen for sure um I just think that's, and obviously I think your, your military um, background definitely has helped you uh, become the leader you are today, just from experience and, and being able to learn and, and especially in those high uh, intensity uh, scenarios. And so, but there, is there anything, and probably there might not be, but uh, as far as like the civilian roles you've had that have been not more high stake, but I don't know. I mean, cause you've, you've experienced a lot. And so anything that's kind of rattled you in the, in the civilian sector, I guess, you know, we can go military term a little bit, but. Uh, I'm trying to think of one that is really stands out about. Right. Um, you know, I've had a lot of, uh, you, you know, in banking, you're dealing with people's lives, yeah. livelihood with their finances. That's true. And, you know, I've dealt with, uh, you know, I'm, you know, you're doing business loans for small business owners that like everything is riding on this, this loan, this deal. Right. So like you got people calling you every single day, like, <laughs> Hey, where are we at? What do we got to do? Uh, am, am I getting approved for this? Like if I don't, if I don't get this loan, I mean, Golly, yeah. we're, we're closing the business, man. So it's like, I don't mean to put it like, <laughs> like everything's riding on me, but you know, there's been some, there's been some times where deals have come down to the wire. Yeah. And it's like, it keeps you up at night. Let's I'm say sure. that. Yeah. It's worrying about, you know, if this person is going to keep their home or not. Mm. And you know, so um yeah definitely uh there's there's been a couple of deals where i've uh i've been rattled but yeah you can't you can't portray that to the customer or they'll just go somewhere else right yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's like uh, i had an experience in a, a med express i forget where it was but um I was going for an x-ray for a rib i had heard it in soccer so i just want to get checked just to make sure i was doing the right stuff for it and sitting in the room and waiting on the, them to call us back to get an x-ray. And we hear outside like the x-ray tech come out of the room and say like something about messing up something and how many more x-rays do I have to do? <laughs> and they're talking to them and they're like, it's going to be okay. And then all of a sudden it's just like, you can tell they're crying and like, I can't, I can't do this. And he, and they just left. And then they came in and said, Oh, we can't give you an x-ray because of, uh, emergency. And I'm like, I'm going somewhere else. This is awful. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. I, you can't show the, the, that you're rattled for sure. Cause that just makes it a whole worse situation. Yeah. Like if I wanted to heard that and they came in and said, yeah, we have an emergency uh, with the patient. We can't give you an extra bike. Okay. But I heard it be, I heard them crying and leaving. Yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, definitely composure. I think is big too. I think there's moments to show emotion uh yeah. and and to have that transparency but yeah i i would agree having your emotions kind of more in control so you can yeah. you can 
release it when you need to. Um, well, because if, if you're in a service industry, like people are coming to you for yeah. advice or they're coming to you because you're supposed to be the expert. Like right. nobody wants to walk into a bank and ask somebody for a loan and they're like, uh, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that, is, that yeah. is the first and last time that they're ever going to come and, <laughs> yep. and, and do any business with you. So absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. And definitely having that confidence, um, helps a lot. Yep. Do you think uh, there's something that makes a a good leader better than bad leaders overall? Maybe a trait maybe that all the good leaders have compared to the ones that are not as good? Um, yeah, I mean, there's – I would say hmm. stumped you threw question, one that in there. Man. Yeah, threw that question, one in there. Uh, stumped because there's so many good, good traits. Guy. I guess it's kind of a loaded question because I feel like leaders have their their strengths and weaknesses, and I think it, uh, it it's a lot that makes a good leader. It's not just one thing, I guess. So I threw a weighted one at you. Yeah, I mean, and you gotta like I want everybody to think of it this way too, like. It, when I'm talking, I'm applying most of the stuff towards like what I've experienced. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, I would say the thing that separates good from bad is like just being present. I think bad leaders are not there. Hmm. Um, they may be good when they're, when, the, when they're there and doing their job, but a lot of them, like I was saying earlier, they take advantage, advantage of, the of it. Yeah and they're not there and like nobody wants to follow a leader that is not at work or you know taking off early or um you know saying that they've got this business meeting to go to but everybody and their brother knows that they're going down to the down to the bar down the road to have a couple of drinks before they yeah. go home so yeah that took that that's actually a good one that a lot of people i mean yeah, just being present and actually when you're there, actually being present and not just yeah. on your phone. Oh yeah, well yeah, sure. Kind of. So yeah, that's a that's actually a really good one. That's a good one to bring up. It's not one you don't usually hear or think about as often. You think about like oh character integrity, but yeah, being present. You got to be present to show any of those. So yeah, that's a really good one for sure. Um, and it kind of goes into so the pencil leadership has five traits, and uh, I've been trying to ask my guests um a question about each of those traits so mm -hmm. the first trait of pencil leadership is that a pencil um can't leave its mark can't be used the way it's supposed to without being held and so that's correlating to us not being able to get to where we are or where we're going to go without coaches and mentors uh, and people guiding us so is there maybe one or two people that kind of stick out to your mind immediately on man, they were such a good mentor or they're my mentor now that they're, they're helping me so much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, my, uh, my first boss that I had at the bank, uh, Jeff Sherman, he's a, uh, he's in corporate BMO now. Okay. Uh, but, uh, he, uh, everything that I've learned from banking pretty much has come from this individual and the way that he's went about his career and the way that he's went about mentoring me and, you know, and uh, some other of my colleagues too. Um, I, uh, I've learned a ton and I, I don't, I don't suspect that I'll stop learning from him anytime soon either. So, right. Yeah, I think it's so important, like the mentors in our lives, like if, if we think that we know it all or that we're at a place that we don't need a mentor, there's something off because we, yeah. we'll never be at a place where we won't need a mentor, I don't think. There's always someone until we're like, you know, 80s, not, you know, when we're, we've done everything we need to do, <laughs> it's just giving back. But yeah, I think, and Grant Cardone, I just listened to him the other day and he said like i've had a mentor and if you don't know who grant cardone is you check him out he's makes a lot of money doing real estate and 
business stuff. So he's, he's got a lot of good influence, but he was saying, yeah, I've had a mentor every stage of my life basically. And, uh, so yeah, even like people making that much money, like they still have mentors the, at the time that they're making that money. So it's a huge, important thing. You never, remember. you never know it all. No, absolutely. It doesn't matter what you do. Right. Like, the president of the United States has a mentor. Yep. I mean, it, it doesn't matter <laughs> what, it doesn't matter what, um, you know, level, um, you get to, you always mm. have, there's always somebody that knows something else. For sure. Uh, there's always somebody out there that's, that, that's better than you at something that you right. can learn from. Yeah. Um, and once you realize that, that's when you're gonna, that's when you're going to start understanding what success is and then oh, you're yeah. going to start achieving it. So, yeah. And in that path, it, it can be hard. And that's the second uh, trait of pencil leadership is so pencils have to be sharpened to be, have a point to be able to leave a, a really good mark. And so um, we um, as individuals go through times that really hone our skills, but, uh, or drag us through tough, rough times that maybe not might not be the the smoothest um, rides. Have you had any experiences where it's been really tough, or it's really kind of hit you hard, but you were able to get through and look back, and it really kind of propelled you to where you are now? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, I'd say there was a couple of times, but uh, there was a span of about four months where. I was working at a branch that the manager was on FMLA. Mm. Then our service manager quit and um, we had nobody in the branch besides me. So we had to hire two new, two new staff members Jeez. that were brand new to the company. So um, as painful as that was for, three to four months and I was basically just doing everything I could to keep the doors open. <laughs> but I, I probably learned more about the job in that short three to four months than I have in the entire, I bet, you know, four or five years I've been with the bank. Talk about throwing to the fire. Jeez. <laughs> you, it, it's, it's funny how it works out when like, yeah. you have nobody to turn to you either figure it out on your own or sink yeah for sure uh, so man that's a yeah that's a that's something else now uh, another part of the pencil leadership obviously a pencil has an eraser and that's so it can correct mistakes even though the mistakes might have a mark still um the external part's gone but is there a moment that you've made a mistake we're gonna get kind of real here that you made a mistake but we're able to own up to it and and fix it and then uh, move on and, and it actually ended up helping you as well uh well dude i make mistakes all the time <laughs> first of all i'm yeah. married so huh. I'm, I'm, I'm always making mistakes i am with you on that <laughs> yep <laughs> but uh no that's it's uh being in sales it's like one of the hardest things to accept like when you make a mistake and you you're afraid that you're gonna lose lose a sale or a mm. deal because everything you do, I mean, affects, affects your income. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I, that I've messed up on in the past, but one thing that my, my mentor mm -hmm. taught me early on is like, if you make a mistake, you need to tackle it head on and do it as soon as possible because the longer you put it off, the more it's going to eat away at you and mm -hmm. it's just going to cause more and more ancillary issues um, down the road. Yeah. So um, there's plenty of times where I've messed up on, on loans, telling people I don't need anything else after I've asked them five times for different documents. <laughs> And then have to come back and say, um, I screwed it up. I got, I need this, 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 and this from you. Oh yeah. You kind of got to take that butt chewing for a little bit, but then after it's done and over with, most of the time the customers come back and they're like, 
oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is just a yeah. stressful time. So. For sure. Yeah, being able to own it, that's good. You can really learn a lot by owning mistakes. Absolutely. So the fourth uh, pencil leadership trait is that pencils can get beat up and nicked and chipped on the outside, but the lead on the inside is the most important thing. So as long as that's there, it's able to leave a good mark like it's supposed to. So uh, as far as you're concerned, what is kind of like an internal trait or quality that you um, really focus on? Or are you trying to inst instill on uh, maybe your little girls or the people you come into contact with? Uh, well, there's two things mm. that I, I do is, you know, one thing my dad taught me is like, first of all, you never quit anything that you start. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't care if you hate it. Like if you say that you're going to do something and you commit to somebody to doing it, then you yep. see it out and you finish it. And if it doesn't work out after that, then you're good to go. You wipe your hands and you're done. Um, but you never quit anything you start. And then I have some internal drive in me that everything I do, I try to be better than everybody else that does it. <laughs> and I don't know if that's because I was the youngest of uh, three boys in my house, but I've been competitive since the day I came out of the womb. And <laughs> um, I, uh, that's just how I'm driven. And yeah when you're in my house <laughs> everybody knows it so that's awesome I, I i teach my kids to do the same thing yeah. like but i think no that helps other people rise as well if you're pushing to be the best i think other people have to go with you or they're they're just kind of left behind it's kind of one of those things man like you when you don't if you're successful you don't surround yourself with people that that suck yep you don't surround yourself with people that just like suck the life out of oh, you yeah. yep. and are not good at what they do. I mean, That's if you so want to be, the, if you want to be the best, you surround your people, surround yourself with the best. Yep. So hundred percent. Yeah. And those are two good ones. Yeah. So having that competitive edge um, is definitely huge. And then finishing what you start, those are really good traits to to focus on. And then, so that kind of correlates. So you use all that. And then the last trait of pencil leadership is, I think maybe the most important is the pencil is made to leave marks and that's its purpose. So our purpose uh, in the world um, is, I think, to leave a positive change, a positive mark. So what would you say um, is your goal as far as leave, leaving a positive mark on the world? Whew. Um, uh, well, first, obviously I hope I do something the right way to, to teach my kids that, you know, um, you know, how to treat other people and, yeah. um, uh, but probably my ultimate goal is that is, I know this is monetary and, mm. you know, money, money wise, but you know, being in the financial industry, that's just kind of how I'm, I'm wired and right. think, but you know, my goal is that before I, before I die, I'm going to donate a million dollars to my church. That's awesome. So whatever they do that do with those funds for the kingdom of God, that's, that's what they'll do. But that's, that's yeah. what I want to do. That's the legacy that's awesome. that I want to leave for and the I, world. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the Bible says it's the, love of money is the root of all evil, not money. And so yep. there's so much good that be, could be done with those resources. So I think that's a, an honorable uh, goal to have for sure. Yep. So cool. Well, Dan, again, we appreciate you being on the show and, and giving us your knowledge and your perspective on being a good leader and uh, what that looks like over being a selfish owner type mindset. So again, we appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, it was awesome. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, good luck with the podcast. Uh, hopefully I can uh, come and join down the road. Absolutely, man. We'll look forward to having you again. All right, man.